brother from another mother. Hey, Nico. <laughs> What's up, Katori? What's going on? This is Across funny because, country, like, we... I was about to say, it's funny. People are, like, seeing something that we do every day anyway. What you doing? What you cooking? (laughs) Well, you know, I did do some purple kale. I did some purple kale yesterday, um, and I got that. And I did some jackfruit and curry with some chickpea. Yeah, with some chickpea. I gotta fly to LA and risk the corona to get some of this. We try to get some of your food, what you've been cooking over there up in Pea Valley and up in your head. Listen. Yes, let's go around. Let's go around. So I have this question for you. Oh my God. Did you I'm nervous think- because I did not know this Kurt, this question is what you gonna do? What you gonna say? Are you nervous? Well, you better stop. Okay. <laughs> um, so did you think that when you got the first four pages of Mm -hmm. the play Pussy Valley Mm -hmm. that it would lead to this moment. And let me explain to people. In 2009? Yeah. 2009. Was it 2009? It was. Yeah. At the Pony Apartment? 2009. I had this apartment that was funded by um, a really wonderful uh, philanthropist named Sandy Farkas, where she supported uh, playwrights through the Lark Play Development Center. And so I would invite actors over on um, a Monday night, and it was called Black Mondays, kind of like a double entendre thing, because, you know, it was about Black folks. But Mm -hmm. it's because, you know, on uh, on Mondays, the theater is Black uh, or dark. And and so on those Monday nights, I would invite folks over and we would just gather to hear people's work. And so mm-hmm. our dear friend Dominique uh, had yeah. her, called me the Nellies right there. And then she is the one who told me about you because I was like, I need somebody to play Uncle Clifford in this play that I'm writing. And so I remember I had, it was funny because usually when you, you know, invite people to read, you got 10 pages. I had uh-huh. both. Yeah, <laughs> I did have fun because this. I was like, it's a lot, it's a lot. And so, did Trying you to put it all together? Can you th- that moment, four pages till now? What does it feel like? Oh, uh, it feels like an out of body experience. To be honest, uh, I remember at that time I wasn't thinking about anything other like where this is going to go. I literally was like, oh, bet, this is some cool Black artists. Let's, let me get to know people. You know, it was about expanding, like, network and everything like that. Um, I had no idea. I had no idea that things would <laughs> blossom into this entire universe, let alone the experience. And um, I want to say, I want to say validity. That, mm. this would, that this would offer. Uh, I, it, the, the piece has done so much for me as a man, as a person, mm-hmm. that I um, just had no idea. But I just think that it was about living in the moment. It was about not trying to, you, you know how people like they, they, they use folks, they, they always trying to talk and like, let me let me rub elbows or you know shoulders with this one. It was nothing like that. It was a bunch of I was coming from choreographing something in the city and was like, oh, bet yeah, sure, I'll come by, I'll read some pages and yeah. I do remember though that I always talk about this the the introduction mm. uh, in your stage direction. Uh, even though it was four pages, like that's four pages of dialogue, but. I found in your writing, because I had seen your work, you know, because I had seen Who Do Love, mm. um, and I had heard about, was it, did I hear about Saturday Night at that time? I think we, that I had begun it uh, around that time, yeah, or it was about, okay. it was about to, it's about to go. It was, it was in the, it was in the next, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I had, I had seen your plays performed, and I had heard about them, you know, the word on the street was, this sister from Memphis got the fire. <laughs> but I had not actually read your stuff. So but when I read it, it was 
kind of like biblical. Like there was so many image, there was so much imagery in the stage directions mm. and, and intentions in that. And I was just like, ooh, this is juicy. I just felt like it was juicy and, and wasn't something that like I always had an opportunity to grab a hold of, especially outside of the context of our forefathers and mothers like, you know, Lorraine Hansberry and, and August Wilson and things like that. So it, 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 it was like, mm, this is good. This is good. Mm. But I had no idea. No idea. And you said it along the way. You just wait. These things, I'm telling you. Where we you just, and you always do this little thing, and I would be like, okay, Katori, all right, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I think because I'm so focused on the moment, though. But yeah, yeah. did you know? Did you no. know that when you? I, yeah. No, I, obviously. I mean, I must say, I always felt like, you know, destiny is what it is, and mm-hmm. I do feel as though there's something burning inside of me that is that demands to be heard beyond kind of like the four walls of the theater space and okay. but i felt like the the theater is my home it's my laboratory and i've just been very grateful that i kind of i have that i think a lot of artists don't they don't have their own kind of studio or their own laboratory yeah. their own home and i really mm-hmm. worked out my voice in the theater, but I, I knew that I was destined to go, the, my stories and my characters, specifically my characters, um, were supposed to be in people's living rooms and, and not mm. necessarily, um, the, like basically I didn't want people to have to travel to go and be with my characters. I wanted my characters to sit inside of uh, these intimate spaces with them, whether it's their bedroom or their living room. Uh, Cause real talk, I feel as though, TV kind of raised me. I don't know about you. Mm, like I think about yeah, coming yeah. from <laughs> from school and being from like, oh my god, times. good times, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep in your head. Is that it? No, that's somebody else. Yep. Keep no, that's it. Keeping your head above yes. water, making a way it, when you can. Yeah, exactly. So TV, <laughs> yeah, I know. People are like, what are they doing? Um. So yeah, TV felt like the the that next chapter always for for me, but I'm very grateful for the time in the theater. And so um, what a lot of people will come to know is that you read the first four pages, like I hadn't even finished the play yet, and then you um, became, you, you originated the role of Uncle Clifford in the only production in the world at Mixed Blood Theater in Minneapolis. Yeah. There, that, that is the only production of the play <laughs> that ever was done. And so my question, another question for you is having basically 10 years under your belt. No, not, well, yeah, kind of 10 years under your belt in terms of being in this character, having seen her, her genesis from the first four pages to an actual TV show. Did you come on set feeling as though you needed to be a leader in in this world and, and for the other cast members? Uh, yes and no. Yes and no is the answer to that. Uh, I knew that Uncle Clifford ran, you know, ran the club. Uh, what, what people don't know, what you guys at home don't know is that I had not read the entire series, right? Mm-hmm. Before we first started shooting. I had literally only read the pilot. Um, I had all the experience from doing the play, which was the genesis, you know, of the story. But um, what happens in the series is very different and so much more, very. so much more expensive <laughs> than the um, than the play. So I knew that there was that li- that level of leadership right there, you know, from mm. this playing a character. But more than anything, I felt. I felt like everybody was coming over for dinner Mm. in a lot of ways, in a lot of ways. So like, for example, when I first met Dan, Dan Johnson, who plays Corbin, I remember Corbin from the play, right? Mm, Yeah, yeah, completely different. Completely different. And so, but, but, but low key in the writing, it was the same in terms of the way he was described and all of that was the same. And so when I met him, it was almost like, I, I don't know, like you, like I, when I met my sister for the first time, because my sister was mm. born in Ghana, 
you know, and I, I, I went to Ghana for the first time when I was 11. So I was like, sister, it was like a color purple moment. Like, oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? But when I met Dan for the first time, it was just like, oh, my brother, my childhood friend, you know what I mean? Wow. It was, mm -hmm. So it, it, it wasn't, I didn't think like, okay, I have to do this. We have to talk like this and we have to move. Like there was no hard, fast rules. It was more like Thanksgiving dinner kind of sort of. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And which, which, go ahead. Go. No, you go ahead. I was going to turn the question to you in uh -huh. that you talk about with theater, how we have, the, it's been a laboratory for you. Mm -hmm. How has that space of, of creating and cultivating and, and fine tuning the, the way that you can be hands on and, and connect with actors in theater, how was that transition moving into TV? Well, I think that because I had such a hands-on experience in, in my theater life and in my theater career, that mm -hmm. helped me uh, a lot becoming a showrunner because there ain't no book. I mean, I wish they had some classes on this mother, this whole showrunning stuff. I mean, <laughs> it's crazy. The learning curve is insane. And real talk, you can only learn it by doing it. And luckily, I was, because I, I, I used to be an actor as well. And so I really, and I love actors. I respect actors so much. I have dated many actors and I married an actor. So, <laughs> a former actor. Uh, so I, I understand how actors tick uh, on a very intimate level. And, and so it, it was a dream to be able to use my theatrical skill set and translate it into TV and, and think mm -hmm. about my, my actors as an acting company, as an, an actual ensemble yeah. versus just like, oh, this person is hired for, you know, this, you know, this period of time. It's like, yeah. no, we're a family. And, I, and it's interesting. I think that's why we always say like, anytime we post on social media, yeah. like, yeah, this is the pink family, you know, friends and mm -hmm. family, because I always thought of you guys as an, a, an, a company that was going to be together for seven years. Yeah. And yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. there were going to be people who kind of um, uh, stood out in that they had kind of like natural leadership qualities like you, the fact that you had the, the experience with the play. And then you, Nico, you're just naturally very similar to Uncle um, Clifford, the character that you kind of like way. a mama yeah. bear. Yeah, you kind yeah. of mama bear. Yeah. You'd be like getting yeah. people in order. <laughs> you know, you'd be pulling folks aside. Like, you need to be, you need to listen, read the words. I love it. I, I love it. I love it. I have my metronome uh, yeah. in, the fam in the family. Um, but I think that 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 singular experience of, of working with actors hands on uh, in the theater world is, is the reason why we are such a kind of close knit unit um, mm -hmm. uh, on agree. set and offset, oh. I would say. Yeah. 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 And I think it was something that was so different for a lot of actors coming mm -hmm. into the world of, of Chuck Elisa. And it was like, wait, she's here. Even people with, far more experience and years under their belt of, 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 of on-camera work. We're like, wait, she's here? Yeah. Wait, huh? You, you know? And I thought it that was, was never foreign to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that the, the, the culture from theater of really getting in and doing the work and what are we saying? What is this moment really about? Yeah. And how can we tell it differently? Like, you know, um, I always reference, you know, my mm -hmm. moment of, aha, uh -huh, you talking about the, coming on set, but a huge aha uh -huh was in episode five. Yeah. When, you know, we had that moment um, and it was kind of like, mm, well, what is this? I think Nico, my, my brain and my, my instrument, my instincts as a gay black man were, it, it was in the way, it was in a way, and you literally just came in and was just like, <laughs> you came in through the set, stepping over, stepping over this, climbing over my couch, and was like, they told that story before. This is something different. <laughs> do that and just thing. so that yeah. just so that people know what we're talking about, like in, in there's you know a moment where you, you're getting loved on from uh, a man, a young man who mm -hmm. you know he's working out some issues, but he wants to express his his love very openly. And and you're like, I remember that the actor Nico was like putting barriers up. And, and it was coming out in the in in the kind of nonverbal communication between yeah. between you guys. 
and I had to roll through set and be like, mm -mm. in this world, love exists right. between um, these two people, this non-binary gender fluid hustler, Uncle Clifford, and this, this young man who's trying to figure out what his sexuality is, even though he's kind of figured it out and he's being brave and bold in this cocoon that is Uncle Clifford's office. This is a yeah. safe space for them. And so in this mm -hmm. safe space, you are allowed to be absolutely free. Your heart should be yeah. free. Yeah. And therefore, as an actor, you should be free to tell mm -hmm. a different story and not a story of uh, down lowness, but a, a story of openness. Yeah. And I think that that's a part of the, the liberation that the audience gets when they watch the show. It's like, oh, yeah. it's possible. possible. It's possible. Did you intend to be so revolutionary and like... <laughs> With, with, with your writing and your stories? Was that an intention? Yes. Was that purposeful? Absolutely. Right. I think Why? breathing as a Black person is a revolutionary act. I think yeah. laughing as a Black person is a, is a revolutionary mm -hmm. act. I think... And necessary. Having, <laughs> and necessary. Having dreams as a Black person is a revolutionary act. We are not supposed to be here, and yet we are. We were mm -hmm. not supposed to be here. We were stolen. Mm -hmm. stolen broken or yet they try to and through mm -hmm. resilience still we create we are. still we survive and so yeah. i do think every time that i get an opportunity to speak a character into existence write a character into existence it it is a revolution and and yeah. and it's good to think of of yourself as part of a, a much a bigger tapestry because it, it requires us all as these little threads to to be pulled together and to and to create um, a new world or what a new world yeah. can look like i feel like yeah yeah for sure lord knows i'm thankful i'm so I'm grateful so thankful. I'm <laughs> um so what do you feel like um going into the future where we now have a, we will have a COVID-19 set, <laughs> you know, we got, we, we got approved for a season two. Um, yeah, but as, yeah. a, as someone who was trying, as the, the showrunner who was trying to figure out how to do this safely, um, because of the experience that you had being a, a, a kind of innate leader on set, how do you feel like that will change in, um, these new circumstances? Because I ask this because I, I, I foresee there being a lot more anxiety on set and a, a lot of uncertainty to deal with. The fact that, you know, we will be in a moment where people are, are risking their lives uh, to possibly play pretend, which I'm not necessarily too comfortable with at this point in time, um, mm -hmm. but it, it's a possibility. Mm -hmm. So I wonder how do we manage the, the mental health of of the cast and the crew, and what do you feel as as a, a cast member who has kind of uh, risen to that level of being that 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 person that people look to? Um, what what do you feel as though um, we're going to have to do to make sure that we keep up the we 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 keep our family strong as we move forward into into this new world? I think that is really going to be about all of us continuing to be as open as we have been. Um, mm -hmm. with one another. And I think that having season one under everyone's belt is going to be a, a, such a liberation in a whole nother kind of way so that when we're on set, I think working through the story, working through the story and mm -hmm. what happens, all of the different given circumstances and all of that stuff with you, the, the, the other writers, and, and I think that kind of combing through that, um, process and the music beforehand to, and yep. help moving that story along but I honestly feel like as a cast because you know I, I do still speak to everyone you mm -hmm. know um you're I the think thread. That, you, keep, you are totally Uncle Clifford in, in even in virtually that, you're Uncle Clifford <laughs> yeah. I'd be like yo what's up what you doing Duffy, extra up? extra <laughs> Duffy <laughs> I spoke to Jupiter yesterday extra extra yes last night Duffy this morning, like we yeah. all still communicate and I think that translates and I it's feel beautiful. like it is, it really, really, really is. So many different people, different places, walks of life all coming together, literally just like in the pink. And I think that um, everyone is just so excited and exhilarated by being able to tell such fresh stories, such honest, real things that we all know 
Do you understand what Absolutely. I mean? Mm-hmm. People are talking about, oh my God, it's so groundbreaking, but it's like, no, it's kind of regular for, for this majestic, for beautiful world. It's regular. And yeah. that's the beauty of it because people try to water it down and people try to, you know, soup it up. Like, no, you got some pom-pom socks from the dollar store, from the beauty shop. Like, that's what you wear. <laughs> you know, like that level of reality and your specificity. So I feel like as, a, as an ensemble, people are understanding that we're in the sandbox now, that we do get to play that it is normal for the showrunner, the writer, to get in there and really work with the actors and, and share what the intention behind the writing of it means ver- and match that with how you're feeling. I think that there's just a, a different cook that's happening. I yeah. think for me, this is me saying what I say, but I think this is why you always have food in your, your work because <laughs> you get to taste, you get to like taste the moments and taste the words. There's um, always you know, chicken food. in Katori's work. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Because listen, it, that's a part of, as I, as I take it, just even when I step outside of it, that's a part of the legacy that exists in your work. When you talk about characters that live and can come into people's homes, they, they stick with you. They stick with you. Mm-hmm. You remember that moment about that fresh, hot fish. I want some fish next season. We need some hot fish. We need a, <laughs> a fish fry. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. That's uh, cool. Um, yeah. Trying to think what else. Um, I had a question for you. Oh, yeah, sure. With the world, how do you feel that the South, the South, the Black Southern culture is receiving the story? We hear, we, how do you think that they're receiving these reflections of themselves? Okay, because you know Black Twitter be popping on. It started midnight on Sunday. Sunday. Black Black Twitter, they be going off, uh, Mm -hmm. which I think is great for episodes. It's crazy that during this time where people have been binging shows, we are demanding that people make an appointment to watch us. Like, this is appointment Mm -hmm. TV. It's this this Mm -hmm. interesting fusion of of theater and... Yeah, and, and TV yeah, that's, that's happening and that you there's a time that we all have to gather and we're all gathering mm-hmm. at a specific time and so the southerners you know some of them i would say i would say 95 percent are like oh my god girl yes <laughs> yes this mm-hmm. is me yeah. this is auntie this yeah, oh yeah, yeah 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 it's unapologetic it's ghetto ghetto it's shakespearean <laughs> it's like all, all of this it's all it's all, it's all the things that we are it's yeah. all the things that we are the only critique that keeps on popping up is that there are some people who um, think that the accents sound forced or they're fake. And I think it's hilarious because they don't know that I am from, from there. The South. I am yeah. from there. And, and that my, and some my of our father. Actors too. And then that our actors, a lot of our actors actually are actually true Southerners. <laughs> and people don't understand how I. Went, I worked so hard to make sure that we had a, a lot of Southerners. That's the reason why we shot in Atlanta, um, mm-hmm. to be able to have access to talent that was actually Southern so that people didn't mm-hmm. have to put on a fake Southern accent. So people are making fun of people with a fake Southern accent, and that's actually how they talk. How they talk, right, yeah. For real, for real, in real life. And I was like, yeah. is it? I think there's two things that's happening. I think, number one, it's um, that thing of people never hearing this ever before this sound yep. and yes. because it's never been respected but that's i'm that's saying fine. this is beautiful i love how my mama sound i love right. how my uncle cliff sound i love mm-hmm. it all and i'm going to pay homage to that i'm mm-hmm. going to be a modern day zora Neale hurston and not put any shame on uh, a, a, a dialect you know i do p- think people are like oh my god is is an accent and a dialect and slang. Oh shit! What is? I'm black and I don't even know what they're saying. Just and saying, I'm like, but right. that's okay. It's 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 absolutely okay because um this is a this is a world that truly does exist and and real talk we wouldn't we wouldn't be trying to lead nobody down no no wrong path. And quite frankly, black folk ain't a monolith, right? That's we right. don't all think the same. We don't all talk the same. And so, but we know that these characters that we created they talk this way. Mm-hmm. And so, to me, that's been the um the very I th- I thought that people were gonna be mad that we was like you know doing a show about black women and they strippers, but they mad right. about the accent, and I was like, well, child, <laughs> I'll take that. 
Right. They're mad about Southern accents from people who are from the South. Okay. Okay. We'll take that. All right. Yeah, we'll take that. Yeah. Oh, Nico! Contore! I know. They're saying, oh, oh, we have to leave. Well, you know, probably on FaceTime. (laughs) (laughs) But everyone, you got, this is, you know, a little entree into how me and Nico get down every day anyway. Yeah, yeah, but I will. I will it's see great. you. Oh, I was just gonna say it's great because it flips when we working. When we work, it's still this. It's weird because it's still this level of familiarity. But uh-huh. you, you become my uncle Clifford <laughs> when, when, when we're shooting. You, be, I'm like, oh, talk to me. What do I need? Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> you, there was this one time actually in in this episode that's coming up this week uh-huh. remember uh and um i don't uh Elarica and i who plays autumn night we were having a moment in the side hallway and you just came in and all we did we put our foreheads together oh i remember we that. put our foreheads yeah we put our foreheads together and i was like okay got it we didn't love. say a word we did not say a word yeah. and i just I, I'm so grateful to be able to create in this space and bring the magic of theater mm. to television like this. Yeah. So thank and that's, you. Thank you for all you're that you're welcome. doing for our, our people. I agree. Well, you know, I, it's been a, I don't know if I could have done this without you on this journey with me. So um, I'm glad that you've been with me. You've been from the trenches to hopefully the Emmys. <laughs> Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's begin to exist. I just want to go. I just want to drink the wine because I heard the wine be good. Or is that the Golden Globe? I just want to drink it's it. The Golden Globe. Yeah. It's the Golden Globes with the wine. Oh, uh, you know, maybe a little we'll, CG at the Emmys. We don't want to go there then. then if we'll be at the seat at the table. We'll be at the seat at the table. <laughs> All right. I love Thank you, you ATX. Bits. Thank you, ATX. I love you too. All right. See y'all down in the valley on Sunday night. Yeah. yeah, down in the valley where the girls get naked. If you do your dance, you know she go shake, shake it. it. Hey, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>